Whether you're fleeing an urban area from the flocks of rabid squirrels, or you're just recreating in a wild place, there's a few tips that you need to adhere to to be more prepared. These are wolf tracks right here. Huge bison bone. Hey bear. Tip number one, just be aware of your surroundings. Everything out here is unpredictable. Nothing is staged, it's all wild. So just be aware of your surroundings, slow down a little bit and take a look around. Like for example, what we're standing on right now is a giant big crack in the earth. And there's another one right there. And there's another one up here. This is all falling into the river down below us eventually. Maybe not today, maybe not this year, but eventually it will. So just be aware of your surroundings and pick your routes wisely. Generally speaking, the wildlife is nothing to be feared, generally speaking. This is a bear-rich environment. There are grizzly bears, there are black bears. There's also several other creatures that could probably harm you in lots of different various ways. Most of the time, 99% of the time, I would say, these animals want nothing to do with you and they're gonna avoid you at all costs. Most likely, the only thing you're gonna see on a bear is its backside as it runs away from you. However, there's a small chance, small chance, that a bear might be interested in you for several reasons. One, it's it feels threatened in some way, it's got a cub near it, um, or very small chance that it wants to eat you. <laughs> so the all wild animals, especially big dangerous ones, the best approach is just to stop if you see one. If it doesn't notice you and it's just moving on, let it do it. Don't, don't bring attention to yourself if it's moving on. Make lots of noise beforehand, so any creatures that are around you might just move on. But if you see a bear, just stand still, and wait. If it's moving away from you, let it go. Let it go. If it starts moving towards you and it's unaware of you, make lots of noise. Talk to the bear. Yell really, really loud. Put your hands above your head and wave. Usually it's just going to go away. If not, if it continues to approach you, scream loud. Make lots of noise. Be very, very aggressive. If you're carrying bear spray, great idea. If not, good luck. Make sure you've got something like that if you're in a heavily bear, a heavy bear area. But if the bear should continue to come and none of that stuff works because a lot of people think that you're gonna have a lot of time right bears are crazy fast these huge 800 pound plus grizzlies can run so fast and they could be on you in the blink of an eye literally so a lot of times you're not gonna have to have a time to respond if a bear does attack you if it does it does jump on you best thing to do is just to play dead lay down on your stomach kind of like this as best you can and cover up your neck and the back of your head because that's probably where it's going to bite you. And what it's trying to do usually is just immobilize you and, and neutralize a threat. If it's trying to eat you, then you're in a lot of trouble. I would, I would fight back with everything that I have, but sometimes it's just hard to tell what, what's going on if it's happening like in the blink of an eye. Surprising a bear is a, is a dangerous, dangerous situation. A big key thing with any predatory type animal such as a bear is do not run away. A bear comes at you, do not run away. Stand your ground and act like you own this place. This is my turf. The bear's in your turf. And if you do that, potentially the bear will just bluff, come at you, look scary, and then turn off and run off in the other direction. Hopefully that's the case. But if you run away, chances are it's going to come at you and it's going to get you and you're going to be really vulnerable. So never, ever run away. This video is composed completely of random helpful tips that hopefully well, potentially could save your life one day. If you have any additional tips that you'd like to contribute to this, please put it in the comments. There's lots of dried animal dung in the area. And if you're in an area, you're passing through an area that's got a lot of biting insects, such as mosquitoes, it's excellent if you have bug nets. I recommend long sleeves, something to cover up your face, bug nets, all that stuff, because if anything's gonna drive you insane, it's gonna be mosquitoes and biting flies and such. But something like this, burning dried dung like this and creating a smudge fire is going to be really helpful too. If you take big clumps of this animal poo that's dried out, it's got to be dry, it can't be wet at all. Take big clumps of this and you put it all around the area where you're going to be sleeping. This little bit of smoke right here is going to help ward off any mosquitoes in your area and it's really, really helpful. And it actually smells kind of nice. It's not stinky like poo like you would imagine it would be.
let's say I've got my fire going and I really struggled to get it going and I anticipate struggling again. I can carry a piece like this in a metal cup or something like that, or just in my hand, I guess, or put it on a stick, carry it that way. And this will burn for a long, long time. A bigger piece will burn longer, obviously. I can carry this for a long time and then I can gather up my tinder in my area and blow it. And I could blow that into that coal into a flame. Pine sap like this is really useful. Not only is it really flammable and you can help, it can help get your fire going if, it, if you've got wet tinder and kindling and things like that, you can light this on. Just a small piece like that will burn for a couple minutes and that will really dry out any wet kindling that you might have. But also if you can find the wet sticky stuff, it's great for cuts and sores because it's an antimicrobial and it will help heal those wounds. These are bison footprints. What is appropriate footwear? It depends on the situation, the terrain that you're in. If you're in and out of the water a lot, it's hard to beat sandals. If you wanna wear closed toed boots and shoes and all that stuff, waterproof, whatever, that's totally fine. And it's a great idea most of the time, I would say, that's my suggestion. But if you're in and out of the water, if you get your boots wet, waterproof boots will stay wet forever. I don't care how breathable they advertise them and how fast drying they say they are. It takes a long, long time to dry out your socks and all that stuff. And walking barefoot across a river such as this one is pretty difficult unless you're conditioned to it, unless you've got hillbilly feet like we do. But I would suggest that you wear, you bring a backup set of sandals. Flip-flops, not a good idea because you're going to lose them in the river. I would say something that can strap to your feet if you've got to be crossing rivers and such is a good idea. If you want to go wading through the river in your steel toe boots that's on you but then you're gonna have to deal with drying them out later on i'm a big fan of neck gaiters such as this one for this situation it's excellent to protect your face in the back of your neck from the sunshine but they're also multi-purpose i've used them to get hot pots off of the fires protect you from the insects biting your face at night lots of different uses as a washcloth all kinds of different things if you're just out recreating for the day on a day hike, you don't need a whole lot of equipment. You don't have to carry a giant big backpack, but you do have to carry a few supplies in my opinion. And probably number one on that list is some sort of shelter. This is just a mil-spec poncho. And this is an excellent shelter for one person. Even two people can fit under this and, and be out of the elements. So I would suggest that yes, you can build shelters, but it's gonna take you pretty much all day. So it's very easy to carry something lightweight like that. Highly recommended. Fire is probably one of the top skills that you need to have if, if you're going into a wild place. And I always have at least two ways to start fire on me. I've got my backup right here around my neck. Right there, it's a small ferro rod and striker. I've got a lighter in my pocket and a waterproof case. And I've also got a fire starter in my belt with some tinder. So that's, that's three ways that I can almost, not guarantee, but almost 100% guarantee a fire with the things that are on me. So make sure you practice that as well. Don't just take it for granted. Don't just say, okay, I, I've started a fire once on a sunny day when I was camping, I'm good to go. No, go out when it's raining next time, when it's pouring rain or snowing even, whatever, and try to start a fire then. And if you can master that skill, then you know you've got it. Having a pretty comprehensive survival kit such as this one, the OSH kit, offered by Bear Forest Knives is a really, really solid idea. It's small, it's compact, you can put it in a cargo pocket, you can slip it into your backpack, and it's got all the essentials that you should need for a survival scenario. Minus, obviously, the clothing that you're wearing and things of that nature, the big stuff. But it's even got shelter in here, so you'll definitely be able to start, start a fire, you'll definitely be able to treat some water, all sorts of different things can be solved, all problems can be solved with this kit right here, and it's really light, really compact, slips right into my pack just like that. You can see how my children are dressed. There's a couple different ways of parenting. One way is make sure that they have everything that they possibly need. They're dressed appropriately. They've got all the supplies that they need. Or you can let them learn the lessons the hard way. <laughs> so she loses her little flip-flops. Ah! And she loses her flip-flops in the river and has to walk barefoot through the thorns. That's on her, doofus. Uh, anyway, Jay, water. What? What's she doing? Okay, go. go. Yeah, go ahead. and she gets wet in her cotton clothes, and she gets sunburned in her short sleeve T-shirt, like I told her not to wear. Then that's on her, and she'll just be miserable. 
Anyway, and listen, we're not very far from civilization right now, so my truck is just right beyond sight right there. We're not in the middle of absolute nowhere. We are surrounded by wilderness, but we're very close to the, the civilization and safety. So anyway, water filter. That's an easy one. Water filter is the easiest. Everybody likes to bring their metal canteens and their metal pots and stuff like that to boil their water. And I do too. I think that's great, but it is time consuming. And it doesn't filter out anything like um, uh, heavy metals and stuff like that if you're near more urban type areas. So if you've got pollution in the water, a water filter like this is going to be more effective at that. But boiling it will really just get rid of waterborne pathogens and that's all it will do so i recommend the grail i like this one because it's also a water bottle so you filter it and you can carry it as a, as your water bottle fresh clean water always face upstream when you're crossing fast flowing rivers Physical fitness is a big one. It's probably the most underrated thing when it comes to survival. If you're physically fit, you're less likely to get injured and get into a survival situation in the first place. Good quality gear is super important. I'm not a gear junkie. It's not my thing. I don't know all the specs on the latest doodads. It's not what I do at all, but there is a big difference between high quality equipment and the cheap crap that you might buy from China or Walmart, you know. So invest in really good stuff and it will last you a lot, lot longer and it will actually serve its purpose. I mean, think about it. Do you want to trust your life with a survival kit that you bought on sale on Amazon for $10? You saved a lot of money, but if your life is depending upon it, do you really want to trust that? I treat all of my packs with some sort of waterproofing something or other, whether it's a spray can of some sort of uh, silicone spray or this is actually beeswax that I treated this pack with so it makes it much more water resistant see that so even if it gets gets rained on or if I drop it in the water most likely the contents of my pack are going to stay fairly dry it's not waterproof it's water resistant but it's really really helpful if you're out for a while and the weather does turn bad you're going to stay downstream of me because my legs are going to stop the flow of water and there's going to be a slow flowing eddy behind me that's going to make it easier for you to walk okay so hold on to me stay right downstream of me stay on your feet sage it's a good thing you've got hillbilly feet <laughs> it's painfully cold snow melt durable clothing is is high on my list but there's always a trade-off durability and fast drying you know, the more durable it is, probably the slower it's gonna dry. The faster it dries, the more, the less durable it's going to be. So something in the middle of compromise is always always what I kind of go for. These pants, these are from TrueSpec. These dry fairly fast, but they're also quite durable. So I, I like these. So find something in the happy medium. What geological event had to occur to make that happen? Thunders, thunder is booming. If you're up on top of a mountaintop like that, probably best to come down a little bit. If you're in an open field, don't take shelter under the only tree in the field. Humans getting struck by lightning is very, very rare, but don't be the statistic. Thanks so much for watching, friends. Really appreciate it. Thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Can't wait to see you on the next one. Leave me a comment. Any comment will do, and I'd be very grateful for that. Anybody know what this plant is? Right here? Hmm. Smells nice. You can see the rain coming.